Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Testing one, two, three. We are back. This is Sister Anne Stay. And this is Sister Veritas. And we're back with Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life. And we are still trucking along here with letting love be our core strength. That mm. we want to live from the heart of our heart. We want to live from the depths. Um, and that is living in a way that's satisfying and mm-hmm. true to who we are. And today we're going to talk about a very special woman. Mm-hmm who can help us to do that, who can fan the gift that we carry, the gift of our love, you know, this unique love that each of us possesses Mm -hmm. that God has placed within our hearts, that she's going to help us um, share this gift to to bring our love and to share our love with others and to live from our core. Who is this woman? Well, (laughs) if you haven't guessed from the title, (laughs) we're talking about Mary, Mother of God. She's amazing. She's amazing, sister. And this is the deal. Like, we never get too old to need a mother. Mm -mm. And I love thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Like, the mothers in my life Mm -hmm. who have nurtured my heart, who have nurtured my mind and my soul, Mm -hmm. um, the power, the strength of that. Totally. Have you had any powerful moments like this in the past you know i actually i really did and i want to i want to share that right now okay um and actually it did lead me this encounter i had led me to think about a blessed mother i will expand on that i can't wait thanks <laughs> so i have a confession oh um all right <laughs> <laughs> thanks for receiving me <clears throat> so i was in the garden a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago mm-hmm. and i was reading a book uh, on John Paul II, mm-hmm. and I was I was there for about half an hour, forty five minutes or so, reading. Beautiful day, and at a certain point, I, I look up and I see this squirrel, and I could tell it was a younger squirrel, mm-hmm. like one of those kind of more inexperienced squirrels. Yeah, and uh, he kind of like shuffled down this the tree, and he saw me, and uh, I guess to my surprise and delight, to be honest, hmm. he, he bounded over to me. Really, I really I know I felt, I felt very special, and it came about a foot away and just kind of stopped and was looking at me and i was like gosh i don't know if does he see me or am i so still that he doesn't realize i'm a person but then he came right up to my tunic you're kidding skirt so like you know our habit Mm -hmm. and he literally put his little nose against it and smelled it (laughs) (laughs) and at that point i looked and i looked i was looking down at him and he kind of saw me and you know moved back a little bit but i felt i felt so moved that he would come so close. So that was that. What a special encounter, sister. It was. <laughs> <laughs> how how do you want to connect that to our blessed mother? Well, yes, this is how it connects. So I was reflecting on this, and you know, like Saint Francis of Assisi, everybody kind of connects him with animals and mm-hmm. how animals would have come to him. And I was like, gosh, blessed mother is like like the pinnacle of all the saints. Mm-hmm. She's like like more awesome than all the saints rolled up together, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I, I bet all of creation loved blessed mother. You know, mm. like I bet, I bet it's something that you don't, we, I mean, I never thought about before until that squirrel moment, but like, I can just imagine her like in the garden and like all these little animals coming up to her and like being drawn to her, <laughs> to the blessed mother. And like, and I just thought that was so dear, you know, and like all the neighbors and everyone just wants to be with her, be in her presence, Amen. including like the little birds and squirrels, you know, and that was, for me, it was a nice little meditation on, on Mary. Sister, I respect your meditation on Mary. I'm all about it. I'm not sure if I would have responded the same way to the squirrel, but I respect your graciousness thanks, thanks. based on, you know, the experiences we've had here and the troubles we've had with squirrels. I hope that encounter bears fruit. I thanks. hope that squirrel grows up to be a little more righteous than those who have gone before him. Yes. <laughs> and, and wreak a little less havoc in our backyard. Yes. <laughs> but no, sister, it's, it's beautiful. And I, as you speak of Mary, um, she is so pure Mm -hmm. and her love is so pure and her heart is so available that to think of the reality that we received this gift, Jesus gave us this gift from the cross, Mm -hmm. you know, in his last breaths. And we all know at the end of life, um, some of the most sacred and precious words and summons Mm -hmm. are spoken. Mm -hmm. And what did our Lord have to say? And it's powerful to think about that in Christ's last breaths, He made a point of saying, behold your mother, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As he directed John and Mary at the foot of the cross, Mm -hmm. that he wanted us to have a mother. And this is Mary. 
And uh, I can't wait to break this open because she is an amazing power and force and gift to us as we seek to live faithful lives of Christian discipleship and as we seek to become the fullness of who we are in God. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know, sister, you want to pray? Break this thing open? I would love to. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Lord Jesus. Jesus, thank you so much for the gift of our lives, of our persons. Thank you for making us in your image and likeness, unique and unrepeatable reflections of your glory. We thank you for giving us your mother to be our mother. Uh, We entrust uh, to her heart all of our needs, our fears, our um, sufferings, all the the relationships in our lives. Um, We give them to her heart, Lord. And we ask for her intercession as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Mother of Life, pray for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Well, Sister, this is awesome talking about but our blessed mother who really is, um, you know, she's the one who crushes the head of the serpent. Mm -hmm. You know, she is her. Yes. Changed the universe. Mm -hmm. Like I think Cardinal Dolan has mentioned this, but that at the center of history is a pregnant woman, blessed mother caring. Incredible. Jesus. So it's like, and I think she's like the most painted person in history. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I've heard that the most painted, um, seen in history is the Annunciation. Isn't that awesome? Her receiving the Holy Spirit and conceiving Jesus. So it's like, she's a big deal. She's a big deal. You know, and and I think, yeah, like you're saying, her motherhood um, is, the Lord intends it actually to be one of our deepest core strengths. Like we can always lean on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sister, I love that. And thinking about too, it's like, I know when I kind of first began my own journey in the Christian life, and especially as I got to know my faith as a Catholic, it's like, I know Mary was at first a little daunting to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, who's this woman on that holy card? And, Mm -hmm. you know, she's immaculate and she's beautiful and she's perfect. And can I connect with her? You know, can she connect with me? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think, um, I guess I want to say out of the gates, it's like that this is a relationship that takes time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's beautiful ways we can cultivate our relationship with Mary, you know, whether that's um, consecrating ourselves to her um, through Louis de Montfort's consecration or Maximilian Colby, um, praying the rosary each day, really meditating on the life of her son Jesus, praying with Mary's heart, which is so deeply contemplative. And in that way, coming to know her son Jesus, but also like, it's almost like sitting, I don't know, on a on the back porch um, mm. with your mom and having a nice conversation. It's mm. like just being with her. Yeah. And contemplating Jesus Christ, uh, her son, um, mm. whom, listen, if you want to get close to Jesus, uh, get Mary on it. Yeah. Because uh, she is a good Jewish mother and she is going to talk up her son and, and make sure you get to know him. Um, so it's like, I think just acknowledging that this is a relationship mm-hmm. and and it takes initiating, mm-hmm. inviting her in. Mm-hmm. It might take um, some maintenance, you mm-hmm. know, like... Uh, tapping into some of the beautiful prayers that we have in our Catholic faith, Mm -hmm. uh, but also entering into a relationship Mm -hmm. and letting ourselves be mothered. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important. And sister, I think what you're saying is actually um, essential because it's the reality is, is Mary's love, you know, for us Mm -hmm. and the the capacity and the ability for us to have a relationship with her. um, Her love is not a generic love, Mm -hmm. you know, her love is a personal, individual, specific, unique love Mm -hmm. um, that she wants to be in relationship with you, with me personally, uniquely, you know, and I think that's really important um, to remember. And and even like you think of all these different images of Mary that have happened over the the uh, the centuries, you know, like um, Our Lady of Lords, you know, and it was Mm -hmm. like each of them reveals, I think, a particular aspect of Our Lady um, and her 
her beauty and her her maternal love, like Our Lady of Lourdes healing, you know, Fatima, kind of repentance and conversion. Mm -hmm. Our Lady of Guadalupe, this tender help, you know. Um, Our Lady of Chastahova, you know, she's a wounded mother in in that image. Um, She understands our wounds. But yeah, just like all these uh, different images of Mary, but really each of them intended to portray a particular facet of her heart. Um, it's so beautiful. It's so stunning to ponder, mm-hmm. sister. Well, even actually, I would love to share a little personally here. Yeah. Just about um, how Our Lady kind of surprised me, Yeah, actually, in, love- my, in my own journey. I'd love to hear. Amen. Um, well, my name, my full religious name is Sister Marie Anuste. And Marie is the Latin possessive. So it means of Mary or to Mary. Mm-hmm. And, and I think even um, as I got to know her early on um i went to our lady the shrine of our lady of guadalupe when i was 16 Wow! and that definitely changed my life Mm -hmm. um i'd never seen um people of such faith people walking uh to her image on their knees for miles Mm. um the devotion and standing before the tilma Mm -hmm. um and feeling this maternal loving presence Mm -hmm. it it made a believer out of me Mm -hmm. and uh wearing um i had a little necklace that i got there and wore that till the day that i entered the convent and was so profoundly aware of her protection so that was like a first step for me in my relationship with mary but she really surprised me and i knew in taking a religious name that i i was hers Mm -hmm. and that the only way that i was going to stay faithful in this beautiful vocation was by allowing her to be my mother, having mm. the humility to be a child mm. and to welcome her maternal care and to ask her help to come to know her son, Jesus. And, but I was really surprised when I was praying about a feast day. Mm-hmm. So each sister right. takes a feast day yep. and the feast day is kind of, you know, a mystery that, um, the Lord has kind of entrusted to her in her heart. And sometimes it's connected to your name and um, and it's beautiful. It's mm-hmm. a powerful grace to receive yeah. um, because you really, it's a, it's a grace for you, but it's also a grace for your sisters, mm-hmm. for the community, for the whole church mm-hmm. actually, because you're, you're really given, I don't know, just, it's like getting a VIP backstage pass yes. into <laughs> uh, a vista of the spiritual life. Totally. And I have, I just want to interject here, like celebrating each sister's feast day. It's like, I mean, we really try to celebrate, you know, special meal decorations, but you do, even as a sister, who's just participating, you are so blessed by the encounter with this feast. Amen. It's amazing. It's a spiritual feast. It is. Amen, right? Mm-hmm. So I was I was praying about my name, mm-hmm. and I was like, what is my feast day? What, in a sense, as I thought about my religious name, Marie Anuste, um, for me, I was drawn, where is like the culmination, the the deepest point of union of those two yeses? Mm-hmm. Our, our ladies, yes, and our lords, yes. Wow. And I'm like... I don't know. I'm I'm kind of like on the happier side. Yeah, I of, would <laughs> of personalities like I would concur. I, I would know. say so. <laughs> Sister, you're a joy to be around. Hey, well, no, there was. I was thinking like Our Lady cause of our joy or like you know baptism baptism of the Lord. Like I was I was thinking big and right. and I don't know like bursts of grace, right? <laughs> <laughs> um but the Lord I in my heart he's like nope, nope, nope. Like I kept pitching these feast days. He's like nope. Nope, nope, nope. And I'm like, okay, all right. So it's like a, sometimes it's an interior wrestling match. And then eventually he's like, it's Marion. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm, I can't, I'm psyched. I get a Marion feast day. This is amazing. <laughs> and um, I'm like, what is it? You know, like visitation, annunciation. <laughs> and lo and behold, um, my prayer, and I knew it was the Lord leading in a powerful, decisive way. He led me to the foot of the cross. Wow, sister. And I knew the feast day he was inviting me to take was Our Lady of Sorrows. Wow, sister. That's awesome. Right? I didn't think so at the time. <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, like, who wants who wants Our Lady of Sorrows, right? Like, what is there to mm-hmm. receive? Mm-hmm. What mystery is there to claim at the foot of the cross? Uh, but I would have to say that um, it blew me away mm. what I discovered there, which was a whole school of love wow. that I literally began to learn everything mm. about myself, about my faith, about the spiritual life at the foot of the cross as I stood there with Mary mm. and learned how she stood in this powerful vigil of hope. Mm. It's like this feast of hope. Wow. Um 
how she was participating um, in her son's suffering Mm -hmm. and in this way, mothering us all and uh, giving us certainty as we face our own sorrows and Mm -hmm. difficulties and trials that someone has gone before us. Mm -hmm. Love is there. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a mother there. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so much that opened up for me. And I share that only because it's like, I think as you were saying, sister, Mm -hmm. Mary wants to be in a relationship with us in a way that is personal Mm -hmm. and unique to allow there to be space to be surprised. And that actually there are so many treasures Mm -hmm. uh, to receive as we allow Mary to walk with us in our lives. And I do, it's one of my favorite questions, like what mystery am I in, right? Wow. Um, And I'd say for every moment of life, you can claim a mystery of Christ's life Mm -hmm. uh, and it can bring great strength and perspective. Mm. Sister, thank you for sharing that. That is actually deeply beautiful. And I mean, I just want to say I've, I've been actually moved and, and I've received grace from your, I mean, your feast day and your witness of, of that mystery. So it's been a, it's been a gift for me to receive. Well, and I would say the same thing about you, sister, your feast day, (laughs) which actually I, when I first heard, I was like, Really? <laughs> and as I've had the privilege of celebrating mm-hmm. your feast day with you in our local community, I've been so powerfully moved at what you were led to choose. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes I feel like my feast day and your feast day are like opposite, but not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my feast day, I'm Sister Marie Veritas, but my feast day is um, Mary's birthday. <laughs> That's awesome. So, and and I have to say, I, I picked it because I remember when I was a novice in the convent that we weren't like we celebrated it liturgically, but there wasn't any like cake or anything. And I was like, like, what? Like, how can we not have like mama's birthday? You know? <laughs> so I basically, You're a good daughter, <laughs> sister. So, I mean, I, it's probably less um, lofty than yours, perhaps, but I, I basically used my my name, the Marie part, as an excuse to take this feast day. So, you can have a party for Blessed Mother, because mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine not celebrating, celebrating my own mother's feast day. And she, I mean, she is our mother. So, mm-hmm. um, it was such a gift to just to celebrate her person, her being. I mean, the gift she is to, to me, but to each of us. So, we like to throw her party. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> Every sister. Year. But, sister, I, I'm... I'm just, yeah, I'm just thinking about what you, what you shared. I'm so deeply moved. And it actually makes me think of my own experience of getting to know her more myself. And it was um, a powerful experience. I'll just share briefly, but um, I was already a uh, professed sister. We had gone to World Youth Day 2016 in Krakow, Poland, mm. which is so beautiful. And I highly recommend to everyone <laughs> to go there. Uh, but we went to the shrine of Our Lady of Czestochowa. And, you know, whenever you go to a Marian shrine, there's particular graces that that you can receive if you, you know, open your heart to it. And so I had a particular intention in my heart, like, Blessed Mother, I want to know you better. Because mm. I, I knew you. I mean, I, my family grew up, we prayed the rosary together, and I, and I love Blessed Mother. I took my name after her. But I, I still felt like, I'm like, I still don't feel like I really know you. Or I, I'm still, mm. you know, working through getting to know her better. And so I, I went to that shrine, or Lady of Chestova shrine, with the intention, Blessed Mother, I, I pray for the grace to know you. That's beautiful. And so there's this tradition that the pilgrims go around on their knees on this hard stone floor around around the back kind of of the, the sanctuary. Mm. And you're offering your petition. You're asking for a petition at that time. And so I did. I'm like shuffling, following the crowd on my knees. And it's sort of awkward because my habit's getting stuck. And <laughs> But it was beautiful. Um, and then just seeing her with her her scars and that image of Our Lady of Chastahova. But it was interesting. It wasn't until a couple days later mm. that we went to a, a very little known shrine. It's not even known to many Polish people, I've discovered. It was called Our Lady of Luzmierz in the highlands of Poland. Cool. It was so beautiful. And, and it was just kind of the middle of nowhere. And we go into this church and it's beautiful. And all these little Polish children are singing. And there's the image of Our Lady, which actually John Paul II loved this this particular devotion. Um, and she's all dressed in gold and she's a little chubby, you know, little, little, little plump. And she's got a big smile and she's carrying little baby Jesus. And it was just the sweetest image. But what struck me so powerfully, hearing these children singing in their high high bright voices uh, to our Blessed Mother. Mm. And for me, the memory just a, a day or so before we had visited Auschwitz concentration camp wow. um, and walked through, you know, kind of like the, the som- somber stone buildings and these, you know, terrible bunkers with their red chimneys um, and having, you know, looked through the barbed wire fence at miles and miles of, mm. of kind of eerie ruins, you know, and just knowing that thousands and thousands and thousands of people had died on this 
place that I was walking. Wow, sister. Um, and burned like animals, you know. Um, and, and yeah, people tortured and, and all just horrific, horrific evil. And then coming to this place of Our Lady of Lugemures and, and hearing these little children sing to her and seeing her smiling face. Just, I mean, after, yeah, such unthinkable, unfathomable, unex, you know, unexplainable, calculated um, evil, um, to look at the smiling gaze of Our Lady and to remember, you know, as, as Sam said to Frodo, that there is good in this world. Wow, um, sister. And it's greater than all the evil because he, Jesus, is greater than all the evil. And that she's the one, you know, she's, you know, over which the cloud of darkness has no hold. You know, she's looked death in the face and she's been victorious. And she's, you know, looked evil in the face and beheld all the, the horrors of, of evil, but has not lost her foothold, you know. Um, and she's not lost her confidence in her son who saves. Yeah, just like the unshakable lady, you know? Wow, sister. The, the one who is not afraid. And so I was so moved by that. And that really was um, a huge gift to me in that moment, uh, kind of seeing the depths of what evil can do, but then uh, what, what our Lord's love can do. Wow. Yeah, but, but how Blessed Mother stood there in the midst, you know? This light in the darkness. Yeah, yeah. Sister, that is so stunning. I feel like I was there with you. <laughs> you were in my prayers. <laughs> Amen. Well, no, and and even as you speak, sister, it brings me to uh, interiorly to feel as if, yeah, I'm in the room with a good mother, mm-hmm. and that feels pretty good. Mm-hmm. I feel safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel protected. I feel cared for. I feel known and reverenced. I feel seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel embraced. Um, Mm -hmm. held Mm -hmm. in safety Mm -hmm. and I think we all need a little bit more of that in our lives and to give ourselves permission uh, to draw close to the source that will bring us there Mm -hmm. that will set us free to rest there Mm -hmm. Uh, I know I've said it before but Mary is like the eye of the storm and you know there can be so much spin to life and question marks and burdens and difficulties and struggles in relationship and yet we can pull back um, as you were saying Our Lady of Guadalupe into her mantle Mm -hmm. Um, am I not here I who am your mother Mm -hmm. Um, do you need anything more Mm -hmm. she says we can pull into that place with her and this eye of the storm, which is calm and still and full of peace. And in that place, find perspective, mm-hmm. find the love to strengthen us, uh, to engage whatever life holds. And I think just you sharing that sister really brings me uh, just to a deeper awareness mm-hmm. of that invitation that mm-hmm. our lady extends and the desire to engage it more faithfully, mm-hmm. or even to think, as you were saying, this whole idea of not being afraid. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like she passes on the angel's encouragement to her. Yeah, that's awesome, sister. I love, that's such a beautiful way to put it. In the Annunciation, Mm -hmm. right? This, As she was confronted with her big yes, which Mm -hmm. uh, was followed by a thousand bazillion more Mm -hmm. as she lived faithful to this life that was conceived within her womb uh, through this overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. She was encompassed in Mm -hmm. divine life. The angel spoke that word to her, do not be afraid, Mary. Yeah. And she stood and she heeded mm-hmm. the angel's encouragement. And I think she's an awesome advocate as we are confronted with the big questions, uh, you know, brought to these big yeses. You know, will you get on your surfboard and mm-hmm. ride the waves mm-hmm. for the glory of God, mm-hmm. basically? You know, will you... Allow God to break in to your life unexpectedly. Will you live vulnerable mm-hmm. to his invitations and his plans? Will you be willing to take, um, to ride on the breath of his dreams for your life and let go of everything else? Why not? You know, why live anxiety as a lifestyle? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Sister, we got to start a t-shirt line. <laughs> I mean, amen. Yeah. It, truly though, sister, it's like living on the breath of God. And this is what our lady did. Mm-hmm. Uh, is such a freeing, awesome way to live. Yeah. And I think going to Mary um, so that we can hear these words spoken to us, don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. The Lord's going to be faithful. Mm-hmm. He's going to back you up. He's going to provide. He doesn't ask and then leave. No. Um, he actually, in Mary's case, uh, invitation came, she gave her yes, and he was conceived yeah. into the heart of her life. Yeah. 
and uh, there they they grew together mm-hmm. and and loved each other in a deep and beautiful relationship mm-hmm. um, all the way to the end. Mm-hmm. So yeah, sister, um, thank you for that experience because it really brings me into the reality of who Mary is and how much she can help us yeah. as we take on this adventure of life. Yeah. Thank you, sister. And I think what you're saying is so important too. like, do not be afraid because I mean, you think, I mean, growing up as a kid, middle of the night, like, who do you call? You know, this is the, this was the classic line in our house. Mama, come. <laughs> you know? And it was like, we call on our mother, you know? Um, and that's kind of like a, almost like hardwired into us, but but why? Because we know we don't have to be afraid when she's there, like you're saying. Mm. Um, and and I love what you said at the beginning too. But you know, sometimes we can maybe have this idea of her as like unaccessible or like she's so pure, so holy. But actually, it's her purity mm. um, that actually makes her m- the most accessible person. Yes, yeah, sister. Um, and she and also her suffering. Like she has suffered. She knows that depths of suffering more than any other human being that has ever lived and so she can understand our suffering and so we never have to be ashamed to go to her to call on her to ask for her help you know and she will never refuse her help to us you know there's that great uh, famous prayer remember a most gracious virgin mary that never was it known that anyone who called on your help was left unaided right amen sister Um, she will always uh, listen to our cry um, and so I think what you're saying is so awesome and so important um, that we don't have to be afraid. Um, yeah. It's beautiful, sister. And the only other thing that comes to mind, sister, I was thinking is um, just how much our founder, Cardinal O'Connor, loved Our Lady. Yes, and He sister. would talk all the time about particularly two mysteries of, of Our Lady's life. Well, three, but the Annunciation, the Visitation, and the Cross. Yeah. And he loved Our Lady. And always um encourage us to come to her but actually what it makes me think of most is um a poem that he Mm. loved he loved so much that he actually inscribed one of the lines on the back of our medals that we wear amen sister. Um, but i don't know if you would want to share that absolutely i would love to share it's 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 a special favorite of the sisters and as you were saying that inscription is and nothing would again be casual or small Mm. right that because of mary's yes this moment of this annunciation, Christ has been conceived and he has broken into human history Mm -hmm. that everything is invested with Mm -hmm. light Mm -hmm. and divinity. And this poem is written um, by a redemptorist father, um, Father Duffy, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he captured it so powerfully. Here we go. This is called The Annunciation. And was it true, the stranger standing so, and saying things that lifted her in two and put her back before the world's beginning. Her eyes filled slowly with the morning glow, her drowsy ear drank in a first sweet, dubious bird, her cheek against the pillow woke and stirred, to gales enriched by passage over dew, and friendly fields and slopes of Galilee, arose in tremulous intermixture with her dreams till she remembered suddenly. Although the morning beams came spilling in, the gradual rubric known to every day, and hills stood black and ruinous as in eclipse, against the softly spreading ray, not touched by any strange apocalypse, like that which yesterday had lifted her sublime and put her back before the first gray morn of time. Though nothing was disturbed from where she lay and saw, now she remembered with a quick and panting awe that someone came and took in hand her heart and broke it irresistibly apart. With what he said and how in tall suspense he lingered while the white celestial inference, pushing her fears apart, went softly home. Then she had faltered her reply and felt the sudden burden of eternal years, and shamed by the angelic stranger standing by, had bowed her head to hide her human tears. Never again would she awake and find herself the buoyant Galilean lass, but to her dissolving dreams would break a hovering consciousness too terrible to pass, a new awareness in her body when she stirred, a sense of light within her virgin gloom, 
She was the mother of the wandering word, little and terrifying in her laboring womb. And nothing would again be casual and small, but everything with light invested, overspilled, with terror and divinity, the dawn, the first bird's call, the silhouetted pitcher waiting to be filled. Wow. Sister, thank you for reading that. Ah, it's so good. It's so beautiful. It's such a meditation on Our Lady and the reality of the Annunciation. Amen. Yeah. And I think too, sister, I mean, for us as sisters, it's like we love this in the sense of the meaning it gives to our yes, but I think this is for every Christian. This mm-hmm. is for every disciple. Mm-hmm. Um, that as we say yes uh, to God's invitations, we bring Christ's life mm-hmm. uh, into the present moment, yeah. um, into our relationships, into our family, that wandering word mm-hmm. who is the God of life mm-hmm. and of love. And Mary wants to help to to do this, to strengthen us to do this. And yeah, praise be to God, sister. Amen. Anything before we go? Yeah. Before we go, I would I would just say and um, encourage if anyone, I guess, is struggling with, with Our Lady in any way or mm-hmm. struggling with a devotion or just understanding or just, you know, what's Our Lady all about? I guess my challenge would be ask Jesus to reveal to your heart the love he has for his mother. So put it in Jesus' court. That's it. That's my simple challenge. Cool. Yeah, thanks. What what about you? (laughs) Let's see here. I would flip it a bit. (laughs) Just to, we're going to be comprehensive here. Is, my challenge is to look again. Mm. Okay, so let's say you're looking at a roadblock in life. You're looking at a relationship that is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You're looking at what feels like a dead end. And look again. Mm. But look again with Mary at your side and ask her to share her heart with you. Ask her to share her spouse with you, this mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Ask her to share her contemplation mm-hmm. with you and ask her to share her yes mm-hmm. to God's invitation there mm-hmm. and to perceiving what God's invitation is there. And uh, in that, yeah, I imagine something new might come into view mm-hmm. and strength for new steps might come. Mm. That's awesome. Amen, can, sister. Can, can I add one more thing? It just inspired me. Totally. I just want to give a plug for the rosary here. I know I've done this before. <laughs> but look, it's going to rock your world. You're a good sister, sister. <laughs> I know. But really, the rosary, I mean, it's comp- contemplating with Mary, the face of Christ. I promise you, it will rock your world. Try it. Pray it. Pray it every day if you can. Uh, it's awesome. It's one of the most powerful prayers we have in the church. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen, sister. Yeah. I believe. I believe. No, it brings me a lot of peace, I know. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things like, shoot, you just got to put in the hands of the good mother mm-hmm. of the universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Wow. Well, would you uh, want to lead us in a closing prayer? Let's do it, sister. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your love. And Father, we thank you for the gift of a mother and our Blessed Mother. We ask, Blessed Mother, that uh, you simply draw us into your Immaculate Heart, into the depth of your maternal care, your tenderness, your purity, your protection. We place all of our fears, our concerns, the ways we struggle with sin, we place them beneath your heel. We ask you to crush them with your strength, uh, with the glory of God which flows from your heart and from your yes. And we simply uh, praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we say glory be to the Father, to the, to the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless and keep everyone. We're praying for you. See you next time. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.